It feels like Plasma 6 was released yesterday, but no, it turns out it's been 4 months and it's time for Plasma 6.1 already. KD plans to have 3 releases per year until Plasma 6 is judged stable enough by distributions, at which point they will move to 2 releases per year, so it is easier to include it in various distros. So Plasma 6.1 has a bunch of new stuff, and also some very very good improvements, especially for Nvidia users, meaning that I had to try this release on a computer with an Nvidia GPU, because testing in a VM for a video, that's lazy, and I am lazy, but not that lazy. And since Plasma gives you all the options to make your desktop yours, Imagine what would happen if you could do the same with the entire internet. Well, I found that app for you. It's Ground News, the sponsor of this video. You can click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to follow along while I'll tell you more. Ground News was founded by a former NASA engineer who wanted a more objective way to read the world's news. For example, this story I recently found on OpenAI, finding that Russian and Chinese groups are using its technology for propaganda campaigns. Ground News comes through their network of over 50,000 news sources to show that over 60 articles had reported on this story, but you might have missed it if you only follow conservative news. So for each news article in Ground News, you can see how credible the sources are and who funds them. All factors that could influence their reporting. Then you can compare all sides of the same story to see the full picture from all political sides, or you can sort by any of these factors to find the type of information you prefer. Of course, I can also follow specific topics and create a personalized newsfeed to avoid being bombarded by unrelated info. For example, you can follow your favorite topics like tech or AI. Plus, their discovery page makes it really easy to find new interests and trusted sources. You can go to the link in the description to save 40% on the same Vantage plan I use for unlimited access to all their features. Subscribing not only gets you access to features like Blindspot or My News Bias that lets you see which news you're more interested in and the bias they have, but it also helps support my work. Okay, so back to Plasma 6.1 and the first major feature is the new desktop edit mode. You can invoke it as usual by just right clicking on the desktop or on a panel. But instead of having the usual UI elements of that edit mode appearing on top of your desktop to let you add your widgets, a panel or configuring the panel itself, now the desktop will zoom out to show all the elements next to it. This means you can now drag widgets in the right place immediately instead of dragging them somewhere and then dismissing the edit mode and then moving them where you actually wanted them. It also makes it a lot more understandable that you're in edit mode and how to dismiss this edit mode, something that wasn't all that clear before. For example, if you want to configure the panel, in the edit mode you just left click the panel and the pop-up introduced in Plasma 6 appears on the right with your desktop moving out of the way. The command bar appears on top of the desktop and if you want to add a widget, the widget sidebar makes the desktop move right, so you can drag things where you want them. You also get a clearer exit edit mode button in the top right of your desktop. It is a much nicer and much clearer experience in my opinion, but there are also a few issues with it. First, if you change the mouse actions on the desktop and remove that right click menu to show an app launcher for example, you kind of lose the edit functionality from the desktop. You can still invoke it by right clicking the panel and selecting show panel configuration, but the name of that option in the menu just doesn't tell you that you're going to go into edit mode. Second, I'm not sure the command bar should be on top of your wallpaper. I think it should make more sense to have it at the top of the screen itself in a fixed position. Third, I don't quite get why the panel stays visible in its normal place and scale, where the wallpaper itself zooms out. I would have placed the panels on top of the desktop itself, zooming out and moving around with the wallpaper. Finally, if you make changes to the panel, the easiest way to dismiss the pop-up to edit that panel is to click the Done button. But this closes the entire edit mode instead of just the panel configuration. I would expect this config panel to be closed, but to still remain in edit mode. Now these aren't really big problems, they're just my preferences and interpretation of how the UI should look like, in my opinion. 
it's still a very, very nice improvement over the current edit mode and it's way more legible. Now you will also get some solid changes to the desktop itself. The one everyone will notice first and that will probably annoy a lot of people is the new rounded corners everywhere. Plasma already had those corners in a lot of places, but they were pretty inconsistent. They didn't have the same radius everywhere. Now the window corners, the context menus and the menus from the menu bars, the tabs, the text input fields and the action buttons everywhere, they all use the same radius. I think it's five pixels if I'm not mistaken. This gives everything a much more consistent look and it's a solid improvement for something that might sound very minor. I'm sure a lot of people will hate it and want to find a way to disable it. I could not find one. And I'm also sure that a bunch of people who felt KD was disjointed or just didn't look right but couldn't quite put their finger on why that was, well, it probably was because every rounded corner had different radiuses. This is a pretty transparent change for most people, but it does give the impression of much more polish and much more cohesiveness. Now for Wayland users, you also get a form of session restore. It will restore your open apps from the last session before you logged out or restarted your PC. But Wayland still has that annoying limitation where Windows cannot remember their exact place on screen, meaning the applications will not be positioned in the exact same place you left them. KD devs are working on that, but for now, you just get your previous apps reopened and they will handle their previous state themselves. So applications need to remember where they were and what they had opened for this feature to really be useful. Now, KDE devs also added a feature to let you configure your remote desktop access straight from the settings. Unfortunately, whether I tested it on a VM or on a real computer, this option never showed for me at all in the system settings, which is why you're seeing uh, the video straight from KDE's release announcement, because I could not find access to it. Basically, the only thing it means is that it lets you enable remote desktop access in your session and then you can use any remote desktop client from another computer to connect to that KDE session. Unfortunately, as I said, it just would never show up on any test that I made using KDE Neon uh, on the days before the release, even with all updates applied. So could not demo it for you there. Wayland users also get corner and edge barriers. You can set these in the display settings. They're basically an additional distance. You can move your mouse cursor before it moves to another display. So if you have two monitors side by side and you have a hard time displaying your auto hide panel that is between those two monitors, you can set up this barrier so you will have some more space to trigger that panel to pop back up instead of having to aim for something like two pixels between your displays. The overview effect now has a better layout algorithm as well, meaning windows should be scaled more homogeneously and placed in a more coherent and intelligent spacing. In use, I didn't notice that much of a change, but I've never really had an issue with how the overview placed my windows previously. If you had issues where some windows were way bigger than others, or they were just placed haphazardly on screen, maybe this will change something for you. For me, I just really did not notice that change. Another small change is the ability to sync your computer's keyboard backlight color to your plasma accent color. At least if that backlight supports RGB and is well supported under Linux. On the laptop I tried it on, it did not work, but your mileage may vary. You will also get the shake cursor to find where it is effect enabled by default, like in macOS, where if you shake your mouse violently, it enlarges the cursor. From time to time though, the cursor in its enlarged state was pretty pixelated and pretty blurry, it wasn't scaled smoothly at all. Finally, you can also middle click the power and battery applet in the tray to block or unblock automatic sleep and screen lock. And you can scroll over that applet to switch between power profiles. Headsets that report their battery will also show up in there and everywhere Plasma shows battery statuses. The web browser widget will also have an option to remember the last page you visited with it or to always open the same web page and you can hide the URL bar for that widget as well. Other small changes include the ability to display file sizes in various standards in the region and language settings. Like for example, the metric system where a thousand bytes is one kilobyte or with the GEDEC system where one kilobyte is 1024 bytes or with the IEC standard where 
it's the same, but you're calling them kibibytes instead of kilobytes. Nothing too huge here apart from the rounded corners, but these are still solid improvements to stuff that people use. There are bigger changes under the hood though, so let's talk about that. First, Kwin now supports triple buffering on Wayland, meaning that when you're using a relatively weak integrated GPU, the animations and the general rendering of the desktop should feel much smoother and much faster. X11 already had that feature, so now both sessions should be on par. The explicit sync protocol has also been implemented, and this is a vital change for Wayland users who use NVIDIA GPUs as it will basically get rid of the stutters, of the rendering artifacts, of latency problems and slowdowns that some people seem to experience with NVIDIA hardware. It is very likely that you will need to wait for the NVIDIA proprietary drivers to be updated to support explicit sync as well. This feature is currently in the beta drivers, uh, but once you have everything, uh, this should really solve the problem. Another important change is that you can now set a single key as a shortcut. So for example, you can decide that you want to trigger the overview by pressing just super, something you needed the command line to set previously. Same with mouse buttons, you can map them to a single modifier key. Plasma 6.1 also added support for the input capture portal, letting applications capture the input from a device like a mouse or keyboard. This means apps like Barrier, for example, which lets you seamlessly move mouse and keyboard input between different PCs, this could work properly under Wayland and KDE. Plasma 6.1 can also now find color profiles that are embedded in the display itself and it can use them. Not all displays have those, it's generally provided with their EDID file, but if the file exists, it should be an easy way to have good color accuracy without too much fussing around. You can also decide to lock your screen without requiring a password to unlock it. If you just want to have a screensaver, for example, but you don't want to unlock your screen each time. There's also a new effect to let you hide the mouse pointer after you've been inactive for a while, although this effect is disabled by default. And the keyboard settings page has been rewritten to use more modern components. It now has nice visual tabs up top, bold headers for categories, and it's generally a lot more legible. There's also a new Kwin rule that you can use to configure adaptive sync on a per window or per app basis. And finally, Discover, which is KDE's app store, now lets you replace a Flatpak app that is end of life by another Flatpak that is still updated, if the end of life Flatpak has provided that information. It can also display banners to show upgrades to a new version of a distro. And that's it for the big to small stuff. There are other smaller changes, like some settings pages being redesigned to look a little bit more clear or to have buttons placed in a more legible way. You have the welcome center gaining new animations and more interactive elements to explain how KDE works. And you have a bunch of polish and usability and quality of life improvements that were just too small to be included in here. Plasma 6.1 is great. There's no two ways about it. It fixes the last remaining major hurdle for Wayland with the input capture portal, triple buffering and explicit sync. So more people should have a good experience with Wayland. It polishes the interface to GNOME-like degrees and it adds some more advanced features on top of that. Something that always surprises me as KDE is already super complete. In my opinion, Plasma is now the best Linux desktop environment for most people. It can be extremely simple and the default interface is very basic, very easy to understand, but it still retains all the super advanced features, but it's not overbearing with these. You're not saturated with features and options, they're only there if you look for them. And I think that's the right compromise. Now, KD Plasma still lags in one major area and that's the app ecosystem. If you don't mind mixing and matching apps from GNOME, KDE and other styles, it won't be a problem. But if you prefer your apps to use a coherent design, KDE apps are still less polished and less numerous than GNOME's. Hopefully with the newly updated human interface guidelines and with progress on Kirigami, KDE can close the app gap and truly become the best option for most people. I currently use Plasma 6.0. whatever minor number it is for bug fixes on my computer to run this channel. I will move to 6.1 as soon as it's available in my distro. Right now, I'm not seeing anything coming to other desktops that would sway me and make me want to move to something else. 
And so yeah, KD Plasma is what I'm gonna use and it's also what I'm going to recommend to every new user for Linux because it's just a complete package that should suit everyone's needs. Just like today's sponsor can suit everyone's needs. Tuxedo Computers makes laptops, desktops and small form factor PCs that run with Linux out of the box. Compared to just buying an off-the-shelf laptop from a Windows-only manufacturer, this means that Linux just will run like a dream on your computer. You don't have to worry about hardware incompatibilities because Tuxedo actually submits patches upstream to support all that hardware. And if those patches haven't been accepted yet, they have repos you can add to most major distros to add those fixes to any distro you want to slap onto those devices. They have a big range of devices that should fit every need and every price point, whether you're looking for a small form factor PC, a laptop for office work, all the way up to gaming stuff, workstations, they have it all all the devices are customizable in terms of the components. The laptops can be opened, repaired, and upgraded. You can have your own logo engraved on the lid. You can have your own custom keyboard layout. It's just really, really great. I only use Tuxedo computers these days for work and for gaming, so I can only recommend them. The link is in the description of the video. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to help support it. Uh, and you get some pretty cool benefits with that as well. So thanks for watching. And I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.